Hello, everyone. Welcome to another lecture in the PNS, uh, um, PNS DRAM Mentor course. In this lecture, Ismail will present his recent work, uh, our recent work uh, in functionally complete Boolean logic in real DRAM chips. So Ismail, please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Atabar. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ismail. I'm a PhD student in Safar ETH theory. And this work is called Function Complete Boolean Logic in Real DRAM Chips Experimental Characterization and Analysis. This is recently published and I presented at HBC 2024. So let's get started. So let's start with an executive summary. The motivation is processing using DRAM can elevate the performance of energy bottlenecks caused by frequent data movement between main memory uh, and processing units. And prior work showed that existing of the shaft DRAM chips can perform three input maturity and two input and and or operations. However, this proof of concept demonstrations do not provide functional complete operations such as and or nor, not operation and more than two input and and or operations. In this study, we test a total of 256 DDR4 DRAM chips from two major manufacturers. And we observed that of the shaft DRAM chips can perform not and two, four, eight, 16 input and and or and or operations with very high reliability, more than 94% success rate. And data pattern and temperature only slightly affect the reliability of these operations, less than 2% decrease in the success of features are reliable to measure. Here's the outline of my talk. Well, let's start a brief background. So DRAM is used as main memory in many computing systems, and DRAM, a DRAM model consists of multiple DRAM chips, the H black square in this DRAM model. Each chip contains multiple bands, and each band contains multiple subarrays and sense amplifiers. Inside the subarray, we have two-dimensional array of DRAM cells, and a row of DRAM cells form the DRAM row, and they're connected through word line, and row of sense amplifiers are connected to these cells through bit lines. To achieve high-density DRAM chips, open bit line architecture is widely adapted in modern DRAM modules. In this architecture, each subarray's bit line are connected to rows of sense amplifiers, one above and one below the subarray. And this results in neighboring subarrays that share common sense amplifiers. During an activation, another bit line in a neighboring subarray is also involved. And bit line bar have a complementary voltage value due to sense amplifier as uh, consists of two back-to-back -back inverters. And let's take a look at the uh, major DRAM operations. Data is internal access in a row clarity. To access a data, memory control first needs to activate the row that contains the data and fetch the row's content into sense amplifiers. Then column accesses are served from the sense amplifiers using read and write commands. And finally, subarray needs to be precharged to get ready for the next row activation. Now let's go, uh, let's go with our goal and the overview of the study. Our goal is to understand the capability of off-the-shelf DRAM chips that just beyond just storing data and rigorously characterize the reliability of these computational capabilities into neighboring subarrays, can perform not operation with up to 32 output operands, and can perform up to 16 input and net or and or operations. And let's check our experimental methodology. We use an FPGA-based DDR4 testing structure developed from DRAM vendor that enables fine-grained control over DRAM command timings and temperature. And in this study, we test a total of 256 DDR4 chips from two major manufacturers. And we cover different die revisions and chip densities. In this study, we focus on two neighboring subarrays, here denoted as subarray X and subarray Y, which share a common component, sense amplifiers. We perform our experiment using the following command sequence, activate row A, which is in subarray X, per charge, and activate row B. We carefully sweep four parameters, row addresses, row A and row B, and timing parameters between 
uh, rock activation role A and precharge and between precharge and activation role B. And let's move on to our first analysis. And we, in this analysis, we will demonstrate how of the shaft DRAM chips are capable of simultaneously activating up to 48 rows in neighboring subarrays. Our key observation is activating two rows in quick succession can simultaneously activate multiple rows in neighboring subarrays. You may remember this uh, pictorial example where subarray X and subarray Y are neighbor subarrays, and row A and row B are, again, neighboring rows. And when we respect the timing parameters between each command, C, each command B between act and pre and pre and act, we activate a single row at a given time. However, when we create the violate this timing parameters between each comment, uh, we activate multiple rows in neighboring subways. To rigorously characterize and understand which and how many rows are activated, we sweep two key parameters. Row A addresses, we sweep to test all rows in subarray X, and row B address, we test all rows in subarray Y, again to remind you subarray X and subarray Y are neighbors. We observe that when we when row A and row B in neighboring subarrays are activated with violated timing parameters of the shaft DRAM chips have two distinct sets of simultaneous activation patterns in two neighboring subarrays. First pattern is exactly the same number of row, number of rows in each subarray are activated. We observe that we can activate up to 16 rows in neighboring subarrays and traverse a total of 32 rows. Second pattern is twice as many rows in one subarray compared to its neighbor subarray are activated. We observe that we can activate up to 16 rows in one subarray while activating 32 rows in neighboring subarrays, which is a total of 48 rounds. Our key takeaway is of the shaft DRAM chips can be simultaneously activate multiple rows in two neighboring subarrays, and they can activate up to 48 rows. Is there time limited? I would like to refer you to our paper for more result and detailed analysis. Now, second analysis, uh, not operation. Our key idea is to leverage the connection between neighboring subarrays, the not gate in the sense amplifier. By simultaneously activating rows in neighboring subarrays, we can connect these rows through a not gate. As an example, the source and destination in neighboring subarrays, and if we first activate source and then activate destination without deactivating the source cell, there is this results in sense amplifier to drive the negated source value to the destination. Let's see how we can perform that operation destination cells that neighboring in neighboring subarrays, and they initially charge to ground, and the bit lines are precharged to with the over two. We first initiate an activate command, uh, which will connect source uh, to the to its bit line, and we wait for nominal timing parameters, which assures sense amplifier amplifies the difference and drives ground to the source bit line, and VDT to the destination's bit line, and then. We issue back-to-back -back precharge and activate comments with violating timing parameters. This operation connects destination cell to bit line while keeping sense amplifiers enabled and keeping the destination's bit line to VDD. As a result, after we wait long enough, the negated value of the source, which is VDD, is written to destination. And, uh, and again, to characterize this observation, we sweep row A and row B addresses, and we sweep DRAM chip temperature from 50 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius. And to evaluate the reliability of not operation, we define a metric called success rate. Success rate for a DRAM cell refers to percentage of trials where the correct output of a tested operation is stored in the cell. We, te we test a total of 10,000 trials, here as an example, you see four of them and half of them are correct, half of them are wrong. And for this uh, cell, the success rate is 50%. And let's take a look at our key takeaways. This analysis provides two key takeaway lessons. First, of the shaft DRAM chips can perform not operation with up to 32 this Small effect on the reliability of not operations. Let's take a look at our first result. In the x-axis, 
using a number of destination rows and y-axis show the success rate distribution across test DRAM cells. And we observe that there is at least one DRAM cell that can perform an operation with a 100% success rate in every test number of destination rows. And we conclude that of the shaft DRAM chips can perform its operations with up to two terms up to 32 destination rows. And our next experiment is the impact of temperature on the reliability of the nut operation. To maintain a reasonable experiment time, we use destination cells that can perform nut operation with more than 90% success rate at 50 degrees Celsius. In this again plot, x-axis number of destination rows, y-axis shows the success rate distribution, and Q shows the temperature from left to right, temperature increases. We test a total of five, temp uh, five different temperature levels, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 95 degrees Celsius. And we observe that uh, when we perform that operation with 32 destination nodes, there is only 0.2% variation in average success rate when the temperature increases from 50 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius. We conclude that temperature has a small effect on the reliability of nut operations. Now let's move on to our last analysis. In this analysis, we will see how we can perform up to 16 input and NAND or and NOR operations in uh, off-the-shelf DRAM chips. So let me give you the key idea by showing the four cells here, X, Y, and A and B, draw two from each neighboring separate. In this uh, set of, uh, let's say, in this set of uh, architecture, we when we manipulate the bit line voltage, we observe that we can express a wide variety of functions. To manipulate the bit line voltage, we use multiple row activation neighboring subs. So when we activate this four, uh, let's say, cells simultaneously, the bit line at the bottom subarray becomes the function of the voltages in the A and B, and X and Y, sorry, and the bit line in the uh, top subarray becomes the function of voltages in uh, A and B. And sense amplifier will compare the voltage at the bottom bit line to the voltage at the top bit line and figure out which one's high. And this, uh, let's say, the functionality, uh, changing the functionality of uh, bit line will enable us to perform uh, other Boolean operations. So let, let me give you the basic intuition to perform two input and an end operation. For this example, we have two subarrays, reference and complete subarrays, each of which consists of two cells. In reference subarray, we store VDD and VDD over two. As a side note, we store VDD over two using the frac DRAMs technique in off the shaft DRAM chips. And in the complete subarray, we have uh, cells have X and Y voltage values. With this setup, if we activate all these four cells simultaneously using act pre act sequence, we will get a end of X and Y in the compute separate and NAND of X and Y in the reference separate. To simplify things, assume, uh, assume bit lines will have the average value of their corresponding cells voltage, such as reference uh, bit line will be the average of VDD and VDD. Uh, let me prove uh, that is the case. I'm going to cover all combinations of X and Y values. In the first row through the table, we have X and Y, which are both ground. And, the and when we activate this four cells simultaneously, reference uh, bit time becomes 3 VDD over 4, while compute bit, uh, bit time becomes ground, as the average of X and Y is ground. And sense amplifier will compare the voltages on the bit lines and since reference bit line is higher than compute bit line, the reference, uh, reference cell will have VDD, which is one, and compute cell will have ground, which is zero. In the second case, where X is zero and Y is one, again, uh, the compute bit line is still lower than the reference bit line. And when sense amplifier compares the voltages, again, reference subarray becomes VDD and compute subarray becomes ground. And the third case, is the exactly the same case, exactly. 
amplitude, same as the second case, x and y are both VDD. In this setup, a uh, compute bit line now have higher voltage value than the reference subarrays bit line. And when sense amplifier uh, compares the voltages on the bit lines, now compute subarray will uh, cells in the compute subarray will have VDD, while cells in the reference subarray will have zero. And consequently, uh, this example shows when we carefully initialize the cells in the reference subarray, we can uh, perform AND operation in compute subarray while uh, performing NAND operation in the reference subarray. And we can use this, uh, let's say, our key idea, man carefully manipulating reference voltage to express and NAND or and NOR operations up to 16 input, uh, a bit up to 16 input. And you can check our paper for more details, hypothesis, and uh, let's say observations behind the YB. Uh, how can we perform this mini input operations? Again, our characterization methodology for this uh, experiment are the same as before. We sweep row A and row B addresses, which are neighboring subarrays. And we have three key takeaway lessons from this experiment. First, of the shaft DRAM chips can perform up to 16 input and NAND or and NOR operations. Second, can perform these end and or and or operations with very high reliability, and data patterns slightly affects the reliability of these operations. Here, uh, let's see our first result. Here in the plot, in the x-axis, we have the number of input operands, 2, 4, 8, and 6, 16, and in the y-axis, we have, again, the same our reliability metric success rate distribution. And the hue shows the operations that we perform. And as you can see here, uh, of the shelf DRAM chips can perform two, four, eight, and 16 input and NAND or and NOR operations. And they can perform 16 input and NAND or and NOR operations with very high success rate, more than 94%. And let's take a look at our second analysis, which is the impact of data pattern. This plot depicts the effect of data pattern on the NOR operation success rate. X-axis shows the number of input operands and Y-axis shows the success rate distribution. And Hu shows the tested data pattern. Uh, the row is either initialized with all ones or zeros in, uh, or uh, full ra fully randomly initialized. And we observe that uh, there's a 1.98 variation in every success rate across all number of input operands in NOR. And this, it is, this uh, trend is consistent across all tested operations. And we conclude that data patterns slightly affect the reliability of AND, NAND, or a NOR operation. And you can find the following in our extant version of our paper. The key ideas and hypothesis to perform Half of the shaft DRAM chips are capable of performing nuts and many input and net or and or operations. And how reliability of bitwise operations are affected by the location of activated rows, the temperature for and net or and or, DRAM speed rate, and chip density, DRAM's chip density and dilution. And what are the limitations that we face in of the shaft DRAM chips and a broad discussion on this topic? And I'll refer you for I'll refer you to our archive version, the extended uh, version of our study, to check out uh, more of our content. And let me conclude my talk. We ex in this study we experiment demonstrate that off the shelf DRAM chips can perform functionally complete Boolean operations, NAND, NAND, and NOR, up to sixteen input AND, NAND, or and NOR operations. We characterize the success rate of these operations on 256 of the shaft DRAM chips from two major manufacturers, and we highlight two key results. We can perform NAT and 2, 4, 8, and 16 input and NAND or and NOR operations on of the shaft DRAM chips with, with very high reliability. Data pattern and temperature only slightly affect the reliability of these operations. 
and we conclude that we believe these empirical results demonstrate the promising potential of using DRAM as a computation substrate. And thanks, thank you for listening. Yeah. I can happily answer your questions if you have. Thanks, Ismail. I don't see any questions in YouTube. Uh, so we can, I think, finish up and end the presentation. Uh, okay. Thank, Thank you, Atamarj. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.